Welcome back. So this is another method of reducing aldehydes and ketones to alcohols, the catalytic hydrogenation. Um, we initially saw this uh, in chapter 12, both this and with just alkenes. Catalytic hydrogenation very quickly reduces alkenes and alkynes to alkanes, um, but also it can reduce the ketones or the aldehydes to the alcohols as well. So um, the H2 essentially will get added across this pi bond, and that would reduce the molecule to the alcohol. Um, so this hydrogen and this hydrogen would come from the hydrogen gas. Um, and again, the basement is making seeing that one hard, but it's a hydrogen, I promise. Um, so uh, what's the deal here? This is our third way of doing this. Um, and uh, one thing that we learned way back in chapter 12 is, is this a fast reaction or is it a slow reaction? Um, yeah, and, and, and what we learned is that it's a slow reaction. Can you think back to why that was? Why is this a slower reaction than reducing an alkene or an alkyne? Yeah, so this is a slow, slow reaction uh, because the CO pi bond is strong. Um, so the CO pi bond doesn't want to get reduced with this catalytic hydrogenation method. Um, so that brings up a, a question, well, why, why, is, uh, why is it that these other methods reduce these ketones and aldehydes so well? Um, and, and what we have to think about is the mechanism of that. And, and so essentially, what is the intermediate when we have H minus and a ketone? The intermediate is this O minus. Um, these hydride reagents, so these hydride reagents, these hydride reagents reduce our, um, we're just gonna, yeah, show our aldehydes and ketones again. They, they reduce these well, um, but they don't reduce alkenes well. Um, so for instance, if we had if we had the same situation, but we're, we're, we're doing it with an alkene, we use any of our hydride reagents, and we'll, we'll switch that O to being a CH2 over here. So if we have a CH2, let's think about what would happen in this mechanism. So that would add there, and that would generate this intermediate. So if we had to compare the stability of this intermediate to this intermediate that I just fully filled in, which of these is gonna be more stable? Great, how can we, is there a number that we could use to, to explain how much more stable one of them is than the other? What number? Try and do that. All right, you paused, you've thought about that for a little bit. This is highly unstable, highly unstable. So unstable to the point where this will not work. This, boom, I'm just gonna do another X through that. That doesn't happen at all. Why is that? Well, let's think about that 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 negative charge on that carbon and, and what can we relate to that? Um, well, we know that uh, CH4 has a pKa of what? Yeah, CH4 has a pKa of 50. So that tells us that it's it's not acidic at all. It's 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 not it's it's super stable, it's, yeah, it's, it's not acidic, which means that its conjugate base is super reactive. So this is super reactive. So we can't have a hydride add to one side of that and form that versus here, if we looked at this here, the pKa of that hyde OH bond is gonna be around 16, so it's, it's, it's way, way, way more acidic than the CH4. Um, so what that means is that the alkoxide, the, the conjugate base O minus, is very stable compared to that one, right? Compared to that. Um, so these hydride reagents are able to reduce 
these polarized functional groups because when they add to the partial positive side, the oxygen is pretty stable with a negative charge versus the H minus, if it's being added to one side of an alkene, it's going to form this super reactive carb anion. So that's why these hydride reagents reduce the carbonyls really well, but fail with these alkenes. Um, what we saw previously is that with the catalytic hydrogenation, um, H2 palladium and carbon works really well at reducing alkenes because the CC pi bond is less stable. It's more reactive than the CO pi bond. Um, so that's just uh, us working through why these hydride reagents reduce these well um, and they don't reduce those. And we just said that catalytic hydrogenation does not reduce this well but it does reduce alkenes a lot better. So let's look at an example now. All right, so here's our example. Um, we have a ketone uh, and we're, we're treating with hydrogen and palladium on carbon. So predict the product of that. What's that gonna make? We have an excess of this H2. So you paused it, you're working on that. Unpaused, all right. So hydrogen with palladium on carbon can reduce the ketone, but it does that really slowly, what is it going to reduce faster? It's going to reduce that alkene faster. So if we have an excess of this hydrogen with palladium on carbon, it's going to reduce both the alkene, I just put the hydrogens from the H2 that are now attached there and there, and then it's also going to reduce the ketone to the alcohol. Um, but uh, we have a statement that is missing the final word, and what's that? What was that statement? Catalytic hydrogenation can reduce functional groups chemoselectively. Chemoselectively. What does chemoselectively mean again? Chemoselectively means it can hit one functional group and leave the other functional group intact. Um, so essentially, if we took that starting material and we treat it with just a single equivalent of our H2 with palladium on carbon, it's going to reduce the weaker bond faster. So it's going to reduce the CC pi bond first. Um, so that would allow us to chemoselectively only hit the alkene, leaving the ketone behind. So um, that is what it means when it says it can reduce things chemoselectively. All right.